Hi right, guys, and girls, welcome to Picture This. My name's Dan, I've been a professional photographer for over 12 years, and today we're doing a bit of something different. I'm starting at home, as you can see. I've got my blind shot because it's uh, super, super sunny out there today. But again, it may be sunny, but it's still cold, okay? So, but today what we're doing, um, I've written down some research today, and we're gonna be talking about how to improve your skills as a photographer. Now, I've been doing this for like 12 years, and I've had the opportunity to shoot things like weddings, events, such as the WRC, the World Rally Championship, um, I've done portraits, I've done pets, I've done modeling portfolios, etc. So if you're new to my channel, hit that like and subscribe and say, I'm going to try and hit 500 subscribers before the end of 2021. And so far, I'm not doing too bad, but as I can say, try and push me up there, guys, and get to me for 500 by the end of the year. But today, I was going to say, um, I bought a piece of equipment basically to improve, to improve my video. But um, I was going to say, it's, um, I call it my strap on, but it's not a strap, <laughs> it's not what you think, okay? Right, what is it? Looks like a bit like a bra, okay? What's it gonna do? It's gonna hold my camera. And why? It's the drunk POV, okay? And what's POV? It's point of view. So I've tried this on, I think, twice, and twice I've put it on wrong, but I think I've got it this time, so uh, I think so. Let me just work it out. Yeah, it's that way, I've got it. Right, so give me a minute, guys. It goes over the top of, over the top of your neck, like, not strangling you, okay? What we do is we put it on, I suppose, like a woman puts on a bra, yeah? So I think that's how it works. Nice. Right. So literally, yeah. As I was gonna say, if you've got any questions during this video, leave them down below and I'll try and help out as many people as I can. If I'm talking too fast, then I'll slow me down by 0.25 of a second. I should work. But on that note, yeah, let's get straight into this video. Well, hi guys. Well, thanks for sticking with me. Like I said, my name's Dan, and today I've brought you on POV look, so you see everything that I want to see. So basically, yeah, I'm trying to make my, my videos a bit more interesting, a bit more engaging. So yeah, if you prefer my POV video, then say hit that like and subscribe. And say literally, but I'm going to be talking today about how to improve your photography and how to be a better photographer. Now, it's not all about having an expensive camera and expensive equipment and thinking that you own basically like two two and a half thousand pound lenses. I'm going to say because. You can be a really good photographer just using your mobile phone, okay? So there's a number, number of different shots we can get out there from portraits to product photography, stock photography to street photography. The list goes on, you know, there's so many different variations of photography. Now, let's see if Mali goes over this bridge. Come on then, let's go. Mali used to be scared of this bridge. Now, you probably met Mali in my other videos, but he is a Staffordshire Bull Terrier. And yes, he is classed as one of the dangerous breeds, but my Mali is absolutely soft as an absolute brush. Well, unless you see somebody with a with a hat on, but um, but getting back to photography anyway. Um, but I was going to say I've been doing photography for around about twelve years, you know. So I've shot everything from weddings and landscapes and events and everything. So, um, but yeah, it's going to say how do we take better shots? Basically, um, it's not about just practice. Okay, it's not just about practice. It's about understanding your camera and understanding that exposure exposure triangle. Now. Um, the exposure triangle is all about the ISO, which is about your light intake. Your shutter speed is all about your movement, okay, which is so we can shoot things like long exposure and speed things up and slow things down, so and time lapses and stuff. So, um, but yeah, um, the f-stop, our aperture, is all about our depth of field, so that, that creamy looking background down to that um, down to that really sharp looking image that you want to kind of capture. These can all be done on a DSLR, on a bridge camera, on a mobile phone. I mean, we can, it doesn't matter how, how, what camera you're using, you can be as creative as you want. Now, if we shoot low down, let me bring you right down. I'm going to say, look, because today, let me get back on subject. Today, I'm shooting on a DSLR, a Canon DSLR. I've got an 85mm full frame lens on here. Um, usually, the 85mm is, is usually for portraits, but um, this is an F4. So, literally, it's a discontinued lens, but it's a beauty of a lens. So, um, but I'm going to be taking some shots of this today. If the video gets a bit wobbly, I do apologise, you know, this is my first time shooting on POV and say so this is one of my local walks which I bring Marley on. I hope he's not going to bark now because there's somebody coming. But just bear with me a minute guys. Here he goes, he's checking the mountain lock. He's going to be... Stop! Right, and we'll just move to the side because of social distancing. So come over here. 
So yeah, I was gonna say, let's get back to subject, right? It's not about just the camera you're using, okay? Because beautiful pictures can be captured on a camera on full automatic. Now, I don't tend to use full automatic anymore. And say, a lot of the beginners will, because obviously it's, it's, it's a good idea to understand composition first. Because what's composition? Composition is all about your framing your shot, okay? Whether or not we shoot low down and create depth, or we shoot high up and we, and we create that bird's eye view effect. Now, it depends on kind of your own creativity because at the end of the day, every photographer is going to have their own particular style and everybody's going to have a, their own way, an own different way of thinking and taking shots because how I see something through the camera and how you see something through the camera will be totally different. And why? Because our eyes are different, of course, you know, and our minds are different. That's quite self-explanatory. But um, today, yeah, I was going to say, I've brought you on POV, so we are going to take a number of shots and um, like I said, before in my previous videos, I've said um, I'll share my settings with you, but that's, there's no point really, because at the end of the day, um, let me just, yeah, it's still recording, um, but at the end of the day, my settings are going to be totally different from yours, because my lighting is different, you know, and your lighting will be different from mine, so would not my, I shoot at 100 ISO, you may need to shoot at 400 ISO, so I think sharing the settings a bit, um, well, what we call EXIF data, yeah, which is about the settings we've used to capture that particular image, so, um, but yeah, I was going to say they're all different, but um, yeah, but I will share the images that I'm going to be capturing today. So this is a bit of a circular walk that we bring Marley on, and he loves this walk. So, um, but yeah, I was going to say we're going to be taking a number of shots, but keep practicing, okay, at the end of the day. Always practice, even if you can take one photo every single day. By the end of the week, what you'll realise is, from Monday when you take your first shot, down to the Sunday when you take your last shot, you'll see the improvement in your images, because... because you're going to see things differently all the time. Now, it's a lovely day today. It's a gorgeous day today. And um, what have we got here? Well, got a split path coming up. Let me take a shot. Right, I've got a polarizing filter on here, but I'm going to take that off because I want to cast some of those shadows off those trees of the path, if you know what I mean. So I'm going to say, if it's getting a bit wobbly, I do apologize. Got it in manual, ISO 400, shooting at f.3.5. And yeah, I was going to say, IS, well, manual 2000 shutter speed. And I'm looking for those shadows. If I, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get low down and create some depth. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get nice and low down. And I don't know, is that a strap in the way, guys? But sorry, guys, I'll show the picture. I'll share the picture after I've after taken it anyway, but I'm looking for those shadows. That's coming out a little bit overexposed. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to knock the ISO back down. Oh, Marley, stop. Marley, get over here. He's fairly... Marley, over here. Over here. Sorry, I do apologize. He is friendly. He's really friendly. He's just got a bark on him, that's all. Sorry, I do apologize. You behave yourself. You behave. He's really friendly, don't worry. He's going to say, you stop your barking. Don't be silly. Oi, behave. Now, I'm completely, I've completely forgotten where I was because Marley has decided he was going to scared the crap out of two strangers walking past so um which he tends to do now and then if he gets like jump scared by them but um yeah i've just had to apologize to two random people but um that's the joys of owning a dog but anyway let's get back to the shot and say i did take a shot a second ago but it came out overexposed so i had my iso too high so drop your iso if your images are coming out too bright and overexposed but what i was going to shoot straight up what i'm going to do is i'm going to get low down and what i'm going to try and do is i'm going to try and bring in some of the foreground Bring in some of the shadows up above and literally some of the trees, etc., in the foliage. And yeah, as you can say, try and cast some of those shadows. But I'm shooting a manual. As you can say, you can shoot in any particular style that you want. And say, but if you've got any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. I'll try and do my best to help everybody else. Well, as much as many people as I can, to be honest. But um, I'm only a small channel. I'm going to say, I'm only going to try, I'm going to try and get to 500 subscribers by the end of 2021. I was going to say, if you're just a beginner photographer or you're even an advanced photographer, follow my journey. I was going to say, literally, I'm going to be making a number of tutorials. I also cover tutorials on wedding photography and selling your images online, etc. So if any of that content's kind of helpful, let me know down in the comments and hit that like and subscribe. But let's get back to the shot anyway. So what I'm doing, I'm looking at the different elements around me. Like I said in my previous video about balanced photography, think about all the elements around you because there's so many things you can take in. So let's get this shot anyway because I'm just well, talking and talking and talking. So yeah, we've got your manual, f3.5, ISO 200. I'm looking for those shadows, like I said. I want to kind of create a bit of depth with this image, so I'm going straight at the path. 
I'm not going to try and bring both of them in because it's going to send my leading lines off everywhere. Lovely, lovely. So what I'm going to try, I'll share the image basically, well, now, but I'll keep walking. But um, yeah, when you try and submit, when you're practicing photography, if you're, if you say, if you've been shooting 12 months or 12 years, if you look at some of the images that you actually first started taking and look at some of the images that obviously that you've captured, obviously, obviously on a day out or a walk out or a walk in the dog, um, you'll see, you'll see how your image is improving. Now, a lot, of, a lot of people ask me, kind of like, what is that? How do you get that creamy looking background, that, that blurry background? That's called depth of field, guys. I was saying uh, that's used in a number of different ways because we can do shallow depth of field and we can also do deep depth of, well, deep depth of field. It's just deep depth of field. But um, yeah, it's going to say, and it's making sure that you've got a lens on your camera, which has a very low F number. So that's F1.2, F1.4, F1.8. All of these will be enough to create depth of field. And what it does, it, it keeps your subject in focus and blurs out the background. You can be done on kit lenses, but you've just got to create enough room between you and your subject to do it. And um, it takes a bit of practice, but if any of, the, any of these tips are helpful or tricks are helpful, then say, let me know down in the comments. It's quite a nice day to go out walking. Marley's having a bit of a wonder. So he's having a, he loves the woods just as much as I do. But I'm going to say, um, but when we're out, I was going to say, if you look at Instagram and you look at Flickr, and you look at some of those really, really nice landscapes. Um, a bit like this one here. I was going to say, some of the most simple landscapes and seascapes, they're captured literally kind of like, because they're so simple and they're really pleasing to the eye. And some of the most really annoying landscapes are really busy and there's so much going on, you can't even, you can't even find the focal point because it's just too busy. So yeah, think about the really simplicity. Work with, well, is, is best basically. So um, we don't want to, make a bit of an image too busy if you know what i mean i'm waffling here sorry guys but um but yeah i was going to say i'm gonna be taking a few shots here now look at the sun it's coming through the trees it's a lovely shot i'm gonna try and get that actually i'm gonna try and create what we call a, a lens flare so yeah so taking off the polarizing filter because if i've got a polarizing filter on it i'll just block it right out so i'm looking for is a bit of structure with the trees you know, I don't want to try and take in too much of the, the foreground. I just want to use the trees. Oh, God, that's... Whoa, look at that. Totally overexposed. Right, knocked it right down to one ISO, 100 ISO. Try and use some of the trees as a bit of a... As a bit of a reflector. Yeah, I'll give that a bash. I'll give that a go. So, as I was going say, if you're not shooting in harsh light, I was going to say, bring an ND with you. ND filter, neutral density filter, or a polarizer. You know, they work pretty much the same way. How do they work differently? An ND takes the shininess off stuff, yeah? So you, when you're shooting seascapes and the rocks look a bit shiny in your picture, it's, it's ND, for, ND for you, that is. Um, and we can reduce that just by using a variable ND filter. But if you want to really block out the light and you really want block to off, block off any harsh lighting conditions, yeah, you bring your polarizer and that acts like a pair of shades. So um, it goes straight on the ND lens. But um, but yeah, I was going to say, literally, I've been shooting photography for years and um, I'm getting bored of walking and talking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some pictures. So what I'm, what I'm going to bring into this, into this video is because we're in the woods. We've got leading lines everywhere, okay? Got leading lines everywhere. And I'm, I love this forest. It's called Gagurzan Forest. Well, Gagurzan Woods, it's called. But um, it's, um, the, we're surrounded by lots of different textures. Textures like the bark. Yeah, Mali making an appearance. Mali? Hey, hello matey. So everybody can say hello to Mali. Hello Mali. Yeah? So you can give me five. Mali? Paul? No, he's not gonna do it because he's standing up there. Right, come on then. But it's coming into spring. We've got everything blooming. Everything's starting to bloom out. Little buds on the trees. We've got literally, well, this stuff, what they call a holly, yeah? That never dies. It's always prickly, yeah? I was gonna say, but um, don't you start barking. But um, but yeah, I was gonna say, it's it's when we're out and about and we're recording different types of things. Think about all the different textures around you, okay? So we've got the leaves on the ground from obviously coming out of winter and autumn. I think they call it fall in America. But again, there's so many other things you can pick up. There's moss off tree stumps. There's obviously the, the pathways. I mean, there's bushes, there's trees, there's foliage. I mean, there's lots of different things we can pick up in a woodland. I mean, yeah, I'm still recording. I just keep checking, guys, because when I went out earlier on my second attempt at this, third attempt, yeah, I kept, I kept stopping. It was driving me mad. 
So, um, yeah, it's a bit of a vlog, this one, but I'm going to take some photos. So, interesting stuff like this, where kids have been building their den. Now, I did not build this, guys, so it's one of them. It um, has been here before, but let's take a pick. Thinking about those trees, they can be really damn distracting, okay? So, literally, yeah, try and just bring in the, the like, fill the frame is what I'm trying to say. So, we don't want to bring in too much of the background and foreground elements. We just want to focus on the, um, the little den, I suppose. So, let's get a... A shot of that. I'm going to shoot this in portrait, actually. Sorry, guys, I'm knocking it around. Oh, no, it's come out dark again. There's not enough light coming in. Bang it, bash up your ISO. Like getting your focus. There we are. Now, take your time, guys, because at the end of the day, you don't want to rush your images, because if, what happens when we rush? We make mistakes, you know, and we start ending up with dodgy-looking images and camera shake and blurry objects. So literally just take your time. If things are coming out blurry, smash up your smash up your shutter speed, okay? Because like you hear on my images now, look. Oh, we got two, we got two squirrels over there. They're up the tree, they're up the tree. I don't know if you can see them. <gasps> right, so I'm gonna try and get close, but it's not gonna help with Marley, because he's gonna like ruin my damn shot. I can see them, I can see him up there. So I'm gonna try and get low down, and I'm gonna try and get close. So, and that light is blinding me. Where's he gone? <gasps> Where's he gone? Ah, oh, no, there he's on the floor. See, so we want to get in there close. Don't you just hate it? Don't you just damn well hate it when you've brought him? But oh, Marley, Marley spotted him. <laughs> You're not going to go and chase a squirrel, Marley. You won't even chase a cat. I was going to say, it's, um, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he's going to come running back. There's two squirrels up there, and don't you just hate it when... You think, oh, I'm not going to need a zoom lens. I won't need a zoom lens. I'm in the damn woodland. I was going to say. And there's blooming squirrels running around. Oh, my bad. My bad. Should have brought a damn bloody... Uh, should, have, should have brought a zoom lens with me. 300 or 200 mil. Now, if you've got any type of photography you like capturing, you can say, let me look down in the comments. I'll be, I'm quite interested and intrigued as to what are the types of photography my fellow watchers like to capture. Whether or not that's nature and landscapes, portraits and... And, well, architecture, there's, there's all sorts of photography out there. Let me know down in the comments what you like capturing. And what camera do you use? What's your favourite lens? Yeah, I was going to say, let's get some conversation running. So, um, yeah, I was going to say, it's, uh, I'll be quite intrigued into finding out what other people like to capture. But if you enjoy my content, or enjoy my little vlog here, with my little point of view, then I was going to say, literally, let me know down in the comments, but, and hit that like and subscribe, you know? I'm going to try, and, I, I am going to hit 500, will hit 500, now, I've just, like I said, I've just done a 360. I'm looking behind me again. We are going this way, but I'm looking over back, back on my, uh, on my background. But see the trees? See the light? How it hits it? Say so we can walk past and forget about all these different shots. And you're not going to improve in photography by staying in, right? And just watching YouTube videos. I mean, watch this one by all means. Definitely watch this one. But I say you're not going to improve until you get out there and start practicing. I mean, we, we can try things like intentional camera movement, which is, we can get some really cool effects with intentional camera movement. And it can be down to stuff like, um, well, what we do is we set the exposure and as the exposure runs for two or three seconds, we slightly move the camera and it creates really, some really cool effects. But, um, and so let me just try and get around this corner because um, I'm just making sure there's nobody coming because when Wally gets jump scared, he's, um, he's a massive baby and he bully barks at everybody. And um, yeah, doesn't doesn't really kind of go well, you know what I mean? Looks bad. So yeah, the reason I don't put him on the lead is because he'll strangle himself. So um, it's as simple as that. You know, I don't want don't want him wrapping himself up in, in a in a lead, which he's done numerous times. But he he knows that he's not going to leave my side. So, but yeah, it's going to say I'm not even talking about photography. I'm talking about the damn dog. So um, but yeah, it's going to say look at the. At the floor okay <laughs> textures stones they tell stories all the time roots i mean there's lots of different things we can capture i was gonna say i've done plenty of photography in this woodland before and um he's gonna there's people that way don't even think about it so oh we've got squirrels ahead again but um yeah always be creative think about your different perspectives think about different angles think about all the different images that you can capture so if you can see in your head you can capture it with your eyes I say it's um, just try and be, like I said, creative, be brave, don't be afraid to approach people, see if you can ask for their portrait, 
explain they look, look look interesting or they look um they look cool yeah bring it all in build a portfolio because people aren't going to find your images or find you online not without you um making any making it making any um any portfolio yeah it's gonna say any portfolio so um you just say always just go out there it's gonna say try new things shoot things you've never shot before so i was gonna say it can be done on a bridge camera dslr um on my phone so yeah be out and be go and be creative now lots of people ask me uh, do i classify photography as an art well yeah i do because at the end of the day it's not just taking a picture okay i mean a lot of people tell me well i can do that on my on my mobile phone maybe you can maybe you can but my images will be much a much higher resolution and why because i've got more megapixels my sensor my light sensor and my camera's a lot better than your mobile phone so they say don't just assume because you've got 120 megapixels in your picture on your camera um that it's going to use 120 megapixels every time it takes a picture because it doesn't work like that and why because cameras don't work like that okay so if i take a portrait of you or me or marley the camera will only use enough megapixels it needs to build that picture okay so if i've got a 30 megapixel megapixel camera and i take a portrait it'll probably use between five and nine megapixels to build the picture of the portrait depending on how much detail there is in the background of course but if i was to go take a picture of a is it recording yep um if i was to take a picture of a say a landscape which has got trees and foliage and mountains and rivers the camera needs more megapixels to build the picture does it make does it make it does it make the picture better not really it just makes it sharper a lot sharper so um but yeah it's gonna say if you're doing a cityscape same thing the more detail the more megapixels it needs so just it's not going to use 120 megapixels to create an image of a portrait um but yeah it's gonna say if you didn't know that let me know down in the comments but um it's gonna say i'm just taking some of these views because i'm gonna take another picture and then um, let's tell another story with it right here we go what we have we're on 200 iso which gives me a nice bit of ambience sorry my camera's jumping around everywhere guys um yeah we're gonna get a bit further down because i don't want to bring in too much of this path because it's gonna make it's just gonna roll on forever so look at these trees guys like i said use that light to your advantage oh god that's totally overexposed again i mean i'm gonna need my polarizing filter this heart this light is really harsh at the top here but um i can say literally when you're going out and you're learning photography i mean join a camera club you know it's gonna say get some feedback on your images and learn learn to take some constructive criticism because you may like your photo i'm gonna say your mum might like your photo your dad might like your photo will the general public like your photo is another question so get on a camera club and the, i'm in my camera club which is local to my hometown and um so hi guys you know i well i haven't forgotten you yet so um but yeah join a camera club and get some feedback on your images and learn to yeah to say take take that constructive criticism and learn to get better take better shots change your settings i mean emb embrace photography i mean because i've got a passion for it you see i love photography but um as i say what, what makes it different from from doing any other job well it doesn't what it what enables me to do is freeze things you know and look back at things at a later date and i say uh, the weddings that i shot probably 10 years ago i look at the images now and i think bloody hell did i take that bloody hell that's bad well it's not bad but you know what i mean it's it's a learning process there's no such thing as a bad photo there's only there's only a good photo and a great photo there's no such thing as a bad photo because what can we learn from a bad photo how to improve you know how, how, what did i do wrong how can i take it better now not all images need to be cropped but depending on if you've got anything distracting in your image say like a tree branch or something like that um yeah it's gonna say crop it out i was gonna say because sometimes when things are there and they're really distracting they take our eyes away from the focal point or what it is we're trying to look at in our image or the what we're trying to perceive over through the storytelling of the image do you know what i've done that done guys i've gone that way came back down that way i've walked through the path 
and I've forgotten to take my shot. Damn it. All right, well, let's work on another shot. So, um, but I was going to say, literally, if you enjoy my content, I'm going to say, this is uh, quite new to do POV, but I am getting used to it. It is a bit, bit weird. It's taken me a bit of time to understand how this bra works. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, I was going to say, um, there's lots of different kind of, um, different types of photography I've captured. And um, if you've got any questions about di any different kind of aspect of photography, let me know. I was going to say, I think the only thing I, the only type of photography I haven't done, and I don't think I'd like to do, be a funeral so yeah it's pretty simple as that so but i'm gonna leave it there guys because i'm heading to the river with marley and um yeah it's gonna say if you've got any questions please leave them down in the comments below i think i've said it about a billion times and um yeah hit that like and subscribe which i've probably said about a billion times but i hope you've enjoyed my little walk here with marley and um i was gonna say go out there try something new shoot something you haven't shot before okay and as you said there's lots of different variations of photography like i said earlier on product photography um, stock photography, street photography. So if you've missed any of my other content, I was going to say, hit that like and subscribe. Go and have a look at some of my other tutorials. If you think I'm uh, quite interesting or quite boring or quite mad, um, yeah, then I was going to say, don't let me know down in the comments because I don't want to know. If I'm talking too fast, slow me down by 2.5% 2, 2. and I'll see you in the next one, guys. But thanks for watching. Take care.